Dominic Williams is the founder and chief scientist of Definity. How are you doing, sir? Welcome to the show. I'm, I'm doing good. Um, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for popping on. I see that you're drinking a nice glass of vino while we're doing this. Uh, so you're relaxing at the end of the night, I think. It's, it's not actually vino. It's, the bottle looks like it. It's water, sadly. <laughs> oh, oh well, well, we'll get you a, a, a bottle of vino. Yeah, my sixth coffee of the day. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, on my, I'm on my sixth as well. So today we're just going to give a one-on-one on, on, on your project. Internet, computer, Definity. Um, our audience is very curious. There's a lot of new people coming into the space as we were talking about offline because we have a bull market. And the bull market brings curiosity. So please yeah. stop people's curiosity of what is the internet computer. The internet computer is a very sophisticated blockchain network um, that builds on you know work that I really began in, in 2014. Um, even the main developers, the Definity Foundation, um, which was um, credited at the end of 2016, and uh, you know uh, we ran an ICO in February 2017, and um, then we ran a big sort of VC hedge fund round in 2018. Um, we quickly built out blockchain's largest R&D operation. And uh, we th have a mission to reinvent compute, which is a little bit different to traditional blockchain. So um, the internet computer is a blockchain, but it's completely re-architected and reimagined. It works in completely different ways and it uses a lot of advanced cryptography. And the, the difference is that, you know, with traditional blockchains like Ethereum, Avalanche, Solana, um, when people say they're building on a blockchain, what they really mean is you know, typically they're building on traditional tech like Amazon Web Services. That's where the website and you know the user content, the user experience, all the computation is. And then periodically, um, if it's an exchange or a game, they'll bump you out and you make a transaction with your wallet. For example, in a game to buy an NFT or something like that. The internet computer vision uh, is more pervasive. Um, the idea is that absolutely everything is built on the blockchain itself and gains the kind of properties, the great properties that we associate, associate with tokens. So um, you can build a social network on the internet computer. You can build an order book exchange um, and, and it will run entirely from the internet computer blockchain. Um, and there are many changes that you that, that are involved in the underlying science that, that make that possible. Um, as you'd imagine, probably a, a lot of advanced computer science and cryptography that probably no one's to hear about. But um, some of the you know, more obvious things are um, that smart contracts have a reverse gas model, so they pay for their own computation. And not only that, they process HTTP. So you can interact directly with uh, what's known as a canister smart contract on the internet computer through your web browser. And it will create the interactive uh, web experience for you and you'll be talking directly to the smart contract and for example there's a, a, a one of the first uh, social fi services on the internet computer it's, it's called open chat and uh you know it's got uh, on the way to 100,000 users and it's a messaging service with uh, many many large chat groups some of which have tens of thousands of, of users and every single chat message um, is being processed by an underlying blockchain transaction and all those chat histories, uh, even video chats and images are being stored on the internet computer. So the whole thing's decentralized end to end. Even that service is controlled by a special kind of DAO called a service nervous system that pushes updates to those smart contracts. So it's absolutely completely decentralized. Um, another cool thing is uh, it's powered by uh, this thing called chain key cryptography. And this is going to be very, very important in 2024. Chain key cryptography enables canister smart contracts on the internet computer to create transactions that run on other blockchains. So, um, for example, one of the first applications is the single chain key Bitcoin, which is like a Bitcoin twin. Um, there's been hundreds of thousands of transactions in, in, in the last few days alone. And, for example, if you're a user of OpenChat, you can find it at oc.app. OC.app, if you're a user of that um, messaging service, you can send Bitcoin in chat messages. So this is truly revolutionary. And the reason all this, this is possible is the entire service is running end to end on, on the blockchain itself. You don't need a wallet to interact with it because the smart contracts that create the open chat service are paying for their own computation. And in fact, they're able to use this magic cryptography to even custody um, uh, crypto assets on other
blockchains. And that's why it's possible to, for example, send them w w w with a chat message and do much, much more sophisticated things with them than we've traditionally been used to. You know, I was looking at your website just now and, and paying attention at the same time, so I don't think I was not paying attention. But one thing that crossed my eyes is you're able to to buy, um, uh, it says $5 per, I'm sorry, $5 per gigabyte is smart contracts um, a year. What does that mean? Okay, so one way of um, thinking about this is um, how much does it cost to store a phone photo on a blockchain? Mm -hmm. And it's amazing, actually, when you ask the question, um, how few people really know. So um, a phone photo is about 3.3 meg. Um, and I haven't updated the numbers, but this is correct as I think at the end of 21. If you want to store a phone photo on Ethereum, how, well, how much do you think it would cost to store a phone photo on Ethereum? How much? Yeah. Uh, 20 guay. Actually, it's, it's, it's uh, $110,000 dollars. In theory. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Go back. What? So if you want, if you had a phone, look, if you took a photograph with your phone, it's about okay. 3.3 meg. If you wanted right. to, to store that on Ethereum, it would cost you $110,000. Holy shit. And Are you serious? Yes, so, yes. And in fact, it's not even, in fact, it's not even uh, practically possible because. So I'm, I'm, way, I'm way off. <laughs> yeah, way off. Exactly. So, you know. Ethereum is designed really for DeFi and, you know, it can certainly store and process numbers and, and, and bits of DeFi logic, but it's not designed to, you know, host social media um, such as photographs. So storage is very expensive. And if you want to store a, a you know, phone photo inside a smart contract, it'll cost you $110,000. Um, Solana uh, at that time, I think it was $420,000. Um, and you have, sorry, excuse me, what I'm talking about, $420. It's okay. much cheaper. So one hundred and ten thousand dollars on Ethereum, four hundred and twenty dollars on Solana, which is a lot less. I, I'm still not sure it's technically possible. I think you'd have to sort of like splice it across lots of Solana accounts. But in, in theory, um, that that's how much it would cost, and you have to pay that every year um, because it's like a recurring storage cost. Uh, internet computers uh, similar in the sense you get a recurring. You know, when you store data up there, it, it, it's consuming what's called cycles, which are kind of gas over time. But it will cost you about six, uh, I think about 06 of a cent. Um, well, six cents a year, point six percent, I think. It's, it's so it's about you know, put it in perspective. Like um, it's like twenty thousand. It costs twenty thousand times less to store a phone photo on the internet computer versus Solana, and millions of times less versus um, Ethereum. And this relates to just fundamental differences in the internal workings and and the application of a lot of, of, of advanced crypto. So the reason you know the internet computer is designed like this is our vision is that eventually everything. All, you know, all online systems and services are built on the network itself. And there are really important reasons um, for, for, for this vision. Um, one of the obvious ones is security. So if you look at that messaging chat service, I, I, I mentioned this delivered into the browser, open chat. It's got a very large number of users. And, you know, e each of those chat accounts functions as a crypto wallet. So there's tons of different kinds of crypto inside that open chat service running on the internet right. computer. Um, so as we all know, like if you were to, um, you know, build a social media service on Amazon Web Services and there's a bunch of hot wallets inside containing crypto, it typically wouldn't be very long before those, you know, hot, before it gets hacked and, you know, the hot wallets get drained, right? So, um, so then, you know, you ask yourself, well, what happens with open chat? Like how much cyber security has it got? Um, the answer is none, none whatsoever. Open chat runs on the internet computer. It's not protected by firewalls or any other cybersecurity measures. Why? Because the whole thing end to end is implemented using canister smart contracts. There's no traditional tech involved. And when you get rid of traditional tech and you run 100% of the blockchain, um, you produce something that's tamper proof. And um, obviously you can make mistakes in your code and things like that, but the, the, the way the internet computer is designed, that's much less common. Um, and so, you know, uh, open chat runs without cybersecurity. It's this, you know, very substantial service, very sophisticated thing uh, with very large numbers of users um, uh, or, or you know, relative to what's typical in crypto today and has crypto inside and doesn't have any cybersecurity. So that's why, you know, we believe that everything should be built on the blockchain, you know, all enterprise systems, all, all social media or games or metaverse um, sites. 
And so it's, it's kind of different vision. Like traditional blockchain vision is, you know, you build that stuff on traditional tech, like, you know, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, whatever. And um, so you just build it in a completely traditional way. And then at key points, you know, you're bumped out of the um, service into, say, MetaMask, where you do a transaction and you acquire an NFT or something like that. The Definity uh, vision and that of the internet computer is that, um, we, we're the, the, the internet, if you like, is extended, which is why it's called the internet computer. And you build everything directly on the internet using smart contracts, which is why you see on the website this strap, cipher space as cloud. And when you build with smart contracts, um, you gain absolutely tremendous advantages. Um, you know, it, it obviously number one, security, um, but also um, unstoppability. And you can run these services under the control of a special kind of DAO called a service nervous system. And it's a bit like the equivalent of, of an open source re repo. It allows an online community, a decentralized online community, to actually manage a running service through proposals. So the whole thing's automated. People submit these proposals, like, you know, update the software from A to B. And um, if, if that proposal is adopted, that the SNS actually takes care of updating the software and there's no back door. And that's very, very different to what you see in the traditional blockchain space where there's always a back door, nearly always. I mean, you get some things like Uniswap, you know, different versions of the DeFi contracts. There's no back door there, sure. And it's the black hole contracts. But when you're talking about more sophisticated things, or, uh, uh, more complicated things, there's nearly always either a backdoor both on the blockchain itself, there's some like special admin key that someone can get into fixed stuff. And of course, all the computation, all the user data, the user experience, all that stuff lives on Amazon Web Services and the developers uh, control that. They have a username and password and they can log in and make arbitrary changes. So the point is, if that's the architecture, users can never have true ownership of online services. Um, and that's what Web3, of course, is, is all about. It's about giving users um, control and ownership. Don, we're almost out of time, but I have two questions for you. If we can uh, just be really concise with these answers. Number one, why would somebody use this? Uh, you could build on AWS. You could do this really easy. There's a lot of traditional paths to build what you want to build. And so what? There's uh, you know these these flaws within the system. We've seen a lot of flaws within blockchain, crypto, these companies, hacks, so on and so forth. These immutability also is a, is a bug and a feature. Um, why would somebody use ICP to build? Well, there's no other way of creating uh, decentralized services. That it's the only um, only option. If, if that's what you want to do, if you want to create something like a social network that runs under the direct control of its users through a DAO, um, there's simply no other option today. And if you want to create a service but, that but what is the, yeah, Sure, sure. We, I mean, we always say, you know, yeah, decentralized, that's what we want to build. But, but, but why would somebody want to do this? Well, I mean, look, I mean, there are a lot of people uh, in the open chat community that like the fact that the service runs under the control of a down, that they have voting, you know, govern governance tokens. Um, and I think uh, for, for a lot of people, that's important. The other piece is that if you look at open chat, for example, it's really a social fi service. It custodies crypto. And um, there's just no way you can do that with centralized tech. That's why in the, in the model you see, the prevailing model you see today, it's built in Amazon Web Services, but when you want to do something with crypto, you're kind of bumped out into the wallet, and then you do a transaction in the wallet. Um, with the internet computer, because, um, I don't know what my screen's doing behind me, but on the internet computer- Yeah, what the hell is um, going on there? <laughs> <laughs> on the internet computer, because the whole thing is a smart contract, right? All the data's on the chain, all the computation's on the chain, the user experience is on the chain, um, and you're interacting it with, with it directly, um, you, there's no external wallet. There isn't an external wallet, right? You just authenticate with the smart contract and um, you sort of work within a session. So what that means is that, you know, the smart contract can do all these clever things with, with tokens that you can't do otherwise. Um, so you can create much more sophisticated tokenomics, much richer decentralized experiences. Um, there's all kinds of crazy new stuff people are doing with Chainkey, like they're creating web-based web wallets multi-chain wallets where you can hold Bitcoin and Ethereum assets and things like that um, using a web browser based wallet. And for example, if you're in the developing world, uh, you can open that in, a, in an incognito window and nobody, you know, if you're put up against a wall and someone says, show me your phone, they see MetaMask, they're going to steal your crypto. There's no trace of crypto on your phone. Um, 
they can't see anything at all because you, you open an incognito window to interact with your wallet and then close it afterwards. So all kinds of incredibly powerful things you can do with this technology that I think are, are, are going to prove to be game changers. And I think 20, 2024 is going to uh, be, the, be a big year for Multichain, particularly with respect to this platform. Well, we, we, all, we all hope so. Last question I have here is I've been looking at um, – uh, inter uh, uh, internet computer for a while, and you guys chose a ticker of ICP, and I, <laughs> I, I, I brushed <laughs> it off because of the ticker. I was like, "Oh, this is another silly uh, meme thing that's trying to play, uh, do a play on whatever." Was that on yeah, purpose, or was that an accident? <laughs> well, the reason—I mean, to understand the reason for that name, you have to understand the sort of uh, ethos and, and aims of the project. But really, it's you know, we're trying to extend the internet. The internet uh, has this core protocol called IP, Internet Protocol, and that's what connects the physical uh, network hardware with the upper levels of the internet stack. Um, the internet computer is created by a protocol called ICP, Internet Computer Protocol, and that's 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 the reason for the name. It's not insane clown posse. It's internet. Okay, because it, because that was the first thing I thought. I was like, I'm not buying in insane clown posse. <laughs> no, no, token. no, it's not that. <laughs> Don Williams, uh, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you for explaining this to us. I hope to have you back. We can go a little bit deeper dive into ICP, uh, the group or the protocol, if you will. Yeah. And um, and have a good day, sir. Yeah. Thanks, Matthew. Thank you.